Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to explore the binomial options pricing model. This model is a very neat and elegant way to demonstrate some of the basics behind derivatives pricing. It's probably one of my most favorite topics to present and explain. First of all, it's very simple. It requires just some basic arithmetic. There is absolutely no stochastic calculus or anything complicated like that. But at the same time, it clearly demonstrates some of the fundamental concepts within quantitative finance. It can even be used to derive the Black-Scholes formula, so it's quite a powerful tool. In case I still haven't convinced you enough, I've got these two books titled Stochastic Calculus for Finance by Stephen Shreve. One of these books is fully dedicated to the binomial pricing model. Fair enough, it's the thinner of the two, but it still shows how many important concepts and ideas can be discussed based on this simple model alone. In this video, I'm going to present the basics behind the model and we'll use it to price an actual call option. So let's get into it. Hello, my name is Sergey. On this channel, you'll find many educational videos around financial markets, stocks, and options. If that sounds interesting, please hit the subscribe button. Also, give this video a like, it'll be very appreciated. Thank you so much. Now, before we do something exciting and actually start pricing options within the binomial model, let's first outline the general framework within which we're going to work. In this framework, we have one asset. Let's assume this asset is a stock, and the current price of this asset is $100. So S equals 100, that denotes the stock price right now. Currently, we are in time equals zero. It doesn't really matter what it is, as long as we know that that's, that's right now, that's the present. Now, in the future, this stock can do one of two things. It can either go up or it can go down. Quite a realistic assumption. So if the stock goes up, its share price is going to increase to $102. So in this case, let's write 102. If it goes down, the share price will drop to $98. And that's the only thing that the stock can do. So these are the only two possibilities that can happen. Nothing else can happen. In this time step, we are at t plus one. Again, you will see that this is only a one step process, which is why very frequently this model is called a one step binomial model. It doesn't really matter if this one step is tomorrow or next week or one month, as long as we know that it's a discrete jump. So we are either here or we're here. There are no intermediary states that are possible. Now, what we want to do right now is within this framework, we want to price options. So let's assume that we are market makers and we trade options. And our task right now is to figure out how much to charge clients for our options. Or in other words, how much should an option be worth? And let's assume we have a clock. Hello? Yeah, that's me. Ah, you'd like to buy an option? Yeah, 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 I can sell it to you. Which which option would you like? Uh huh. You want a call option? Strike price hundred and one. Yeah, that's yeah, definitely we can do that. Uh, how much? Um, can I can I give you a call back on that? I, we we need to run it past our quants and we'll we'll get you a price. Is that is that right? All right, perfect. Thank you very much. We've got our client. So the client would like to buy a call option with a strike price of hundred and one dollar. So in this case, K is equal to 101. So that's an option that we need to price. How do we do that? Well, let's try something first. We go in our Bloomberg terminal and we figure out, we do a lot of statistical analysis and machine learning and whatnot, and we figure out that the probabilities of the stock going up is actually 0.4. So in this case, let's write P equals 0.4. And the probability of the stock going down is consequently 0.6. Straight away you'll notice that the probability of the stock going down is higher than the probability of the stock going up. It doesn't really matter what these numbers are, they're just arbitrary, as long as we know that these are the real life probabilities. And again, this is public information, let's assume that the entire street knows that that's the framework we work with, these are the probabilities, and everybody knows them, our client knows them, we know them, that's fine. So right now, let's see what we can do with these probabilities. We don't know the options value currently, so that's something we need to figure out. But 
at expiry at t plus 1, we do know the option's value in these two states. If the stock goes up, the strike price is 101, the option will be worth $1. If the stock price goes down, the, price, the stock price is 98, the option is worthless. So it expires with a value of 0. So what can we do with that information? Well, since we know the probabilities of an up state and a down state, what we can do is we can find an expected value of an option. And that is quite simply 0.4 times 1 plus 0.6 times 0. And if we do that, we find that an option's value, or rather the expected value of an option of a V, is going to be 0.4 or 40 cents. Now, that price represents the expected value of an option. Is that the correct price? Unfortunately, it's not. Even though it's an expected value, if this is how much we charge for an option, as market makers, we are still exposed to the risk. Because if the stock price goes up to 102, the option is going to be worth one. Unfortunately, we haven't charged the client enough to account for that and we lose the rest of 0.6. Even if we hedge this option, we still haven't charged the client enough in order to be completely hedged. And we would still lose money in one of these two scenarios. And as market makers, we do not like losing money. We are in the business of selling and buying options, but we do not speculate. We don't speculate on the future direction of S. As long as we are hedged in both of these states, we should be fine. But if we're not, then we're not really doing our job properly. So what we want to do right now is to try to hedge this option. And we do that by selling an option to the client and purchasing some shares in order to offset the risks against the option. So what we try to do right now is to create a portfolio. So at time equals zero, we create a portfolio P. And this portfolio is going to consist of one short option. So that's the option we sold to the client. So minus V. Plus, we're going to buy some quantity of shares. We don't know how many. I'm going to denote this by letter delta times the share price. Now, this portfolio consists of two unknowns. We don't know delta. We don't know V. Can we find them out? Well, actually we can. And we do that by going to this T plus one state and saying, well, we actually know our portfolio value in this and in this case. What is our portfolio if the stock goes up? Well, the portfolio is going to consist of an option. So option is worth $1, so that's minus one, plus the share price is 102 times delta. Delta, we don't know. If the stock price goes down, then the portfolio value is going to be, well, option is zero, and the share price is 98 times delta. So that's the two states that we can have, and that's the values of our portfolios. Now, remember, we do not like risk. We want this portfolio to be hedged. And in this case, and in finance in general, risk represents uncertainty. As market makers, we don't care about the absolute value of these portfolios, as long as they're the same. Because if they're the same, that means that they don't fluctuate between the two states. And if they don't fluctuate between the two states, we are completely hedged because we know the value of our portfolio, regardless of the future outcomes. And that's exactly what we want to do. And in order to be able to do that, we need to set the values of these two portfolios to each other. In that case, we can solve for delta, and that's going to be the value of delta that makes our portfolio value same in both of these scenarios. So let's see what happens. If we set this portfolio value equal to that portfolio value, we're going to have the following equation. We're going to have minus 1 plus 102 times delta equals to the portfolio value in the down state, which is 98 times delta. Now, if we solve for delta, we'll get that delta equals 0.25, which means that we need to purchase a quarter of a share against our option in order to create a portfolio that is constant between the two states. And if that portfolio is constant, that means we know its value in the future, which means it's riskless. There is no uncertainty about it. And actually, we can calculate the value of the portfolio if we plug in the delta number back into the portfolio value. And if we do that, we find that in both of these cases, portfolio's value is $24.5. And in the down state as well, it's the same $24.5. So again, the portfolio value is constant. And since it's constant, it's risk-free. Since it's risk-free, we know the future value of this asset. And if we do that, then the risk-free portfolio should yield a risk-free rate. Let's assume that the interest rates are zero, 
because it's it's a realistic assumption right now and no one really cares about interest rates anyway. So if we take our portfolio, portfolio value of $24.5 and we discount them to present value using interest rates of zero, well, such a portfolio should also be worth $24.5 right now. Hence, this letter P in this state equals to $24.5. And let's plug the numbers back in. We have minus one option. Again, we don't know the value of that option, but we do know the stock, which is $100. And we know the delta right now, which is 0 0.25. Hence, if we plug these numbers back in, it's plus $100 times our delta. So it's an equation with one unknown. And what we can do now is we can solve for the options value. And if we do that, we find that the options value is drum roll, $0.5 or 50 cents. Straight away, you'll see that this options value is higher than the value of an option that we calculated using the expectation. Why is that? Well, this value of 50 cents represents the amount that we need to charge for this option that will allow us to set up this risk-free portfolio, which is going to be hedged in both of these scenarios. And that means that whatever happens in the future, we will neither make nor lose money, which is exactly what we want to do. We are completely hedged in this case and we allow the client to buy this option. Obviously, we can add a few fees on top of that, some commissions, but the fair value of the option is 50 cents. What I want to ask you right now is, what if I told you that instead of these probabilities, the probability of the stock going up was actually 0 0.1, and the probability of the stock going down was actually 0 0.9? In that case, what would the value of the option be? Well, using these new probabilities, straight away you'll see that there's actually no place to plug them into these equations. These values don't feature anywhere in our portfolio value in neither of these states, which means that these probabilities don't come into the equation in here, which means that they don't impact the options value at all, which is another way of saying that the growth rate of the stock has no impact on the options price, which is a little bit counterintuitive because obviously it does. I mean, what if the probabilities was Instead of 0.9, it was 0.999 and 0.001. In other words, the stock is almost guaranteed to go down. In that case, the options price, the fair value, would still be 50 cents. And that's what's amazing about it, because in the binomial model, the growth rate of the stock does not has absolutely no impact on the options value. What matters is the volatility, so how far away the upstate and the downstate is but the actual growth rate or the probabilities, the real life probabilities, have absolutely no impact on the options value. And this is true both in the binomial model and in the Black-Scholes model, where the drift or the growth rate of the stock is not part of the options pricing equation. And that's what's really interesting about this because it's a nice and neat way to actually show this and demonstrate this. These values do not come into the equation at all. And the reason for that is because we are not trying to predict the future outcomes. We're not trying to predict the probability of the stock going up or down. We don't care. What we're trying to do is hedge. And as long as we're hedged, it doesn't matter if it goes up or down. And the probabilities don't matter either, because in either scenario, we're completely protected. And we know the value of our portfolio. Hence, as long as we have even the smallest, tiniest possibility of either one of these two states occurring, the option's value is going to be 50 cents. And that's the fair value of an option, and that's exactly how much we need to charge the client. Speaking of which... Hello? Yes, 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 we've calculated the options value. We're happy to sell it to you at a fair value of 50 cents. What, what, what do you mean it's too expensive? That's, that's a fair price. We haven't even included commissions or fees. That's, that's, we're giving it to you at a fair value. That's not too expensive. We have, 40 cents, no, you're using real life probabilities. You can't, you can't use real life probabilities. We can't use real life probabilities because we, we need to hedge that if we sell it to you at 40 cents, we'll lose money. No, no, 50 cents is the final price I can, hello? Hello? Anyways, as I was saying, the real life probabilities, they don't. Hello, boss. No, no, he's, he's just being stupid. He's, he's using real-life probabilities. We, what, what, do we, what do you mean you just use real-life probabilities? We, we'll, we'll lose money on this. I, I, I can't hedge with real-life probabilities. I, I, I know that. I, I know he's a very important client. 
All right, fine, 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 fine. We'll sell it to him at 40 cents. Jesus. <laughs> One last thing I would like to address about the binomial model is how realistic is this? I mean, is this even used in real life? Because obviously stocks, they can have more than just two states and time, instead of being just one discrete jump, is a continuous process. Surprisingly, this is actually quite accurate. Because instead of having just one step, you can easily extend the tree and further branch out from here and this node into more branches. And you can have as many steps as you want. And what you can do then is actually price real options using a binomial tree. All you have to do is simply scale the steps by the volatility factor, use some market data in there, and pretty much you can actually price European and American options. Binomial tree is actually quite good in terms of pricing this early exercise feature of American options. What's more interesting is that instead of using the numbers, if you were to use letters and derive an actual expression, an actual formula for the options price, you can then proceed to derive the real Black-Scholes equation. So you can actually get to the Black-Scholes from this binomial model, which is actually quite a fascinating result. So that's all I have for the binomial model. If you have any questions or if anything was unclear during this video, please let me know in the comments below. I'll be more than happy to help. Again, if you're new to the channel, please make sure to hit the subscribe button. It'll be very much appreciated. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.